Let's head back to the Built Bar broadcast booth and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU with Baylor Romney back on the field has Romney at 12 straight completions right now. So near hash, it'll be second and goal from the five. As the Cougs go right to left, as we see it and you hear it, Baylor Romney's in the gun. Tyler Algier to his left hip. Tight twins left. Tight end and a wide to the right. And the throw behind the receiver tried to draw a one-handed grab from Puka Nakua, but the high errant throw by Baylor Romney falls incomplete to third and goal now from the five. Yeah, he had to, that slank got in over the line of scrimmage really quick. Normally you try and give an ultra-wide split. I like the play design. They brought Puka in to give him the possibility of a two-way go, but it meant that Baylor had to try and throw over the line of scrimmage, which led to the errant throw. Triple cluster to the right. It's only BYU's fifth third down try of the night. BYU one for four on third downs. Third and goal. Katoa vacates to empty. They lob for the back left corner. Incomplete. Too heavy and too hard for Isaac Rex. So coming into that sequence, Baylor had two incompletions on the night. He has back, or had three on the night. He has back-to-back incompletions there. And so BYU will try for a non-touchdown red zone score for the first time tonight. BYU was... Four for four in the red zone, all with touchdowns. And now they'll try for a field goal to make it 38-20 to and make it a three-score game once again. So making it a three-score game can be accomplished, but keeping the perfect touchdown record in the red zone will not happen. Justin Smith, the right-legged kicker, on for a 22-yarder. Ryan Rico will hold, gets the placement down. The kick on its way, it's blocked. And the ball's still alive and now downed at the line of scrimmage. And so BYU gets nothing out of it. And that is the first red zone failure of the season for BYU. The Cougs had been 14 for 14 with 12 touchdowns. Now it's 14 for 15 with a blocked field goal after second and goal from the five. Incomplete. Third and goal from the five. Incomplete. And then fourth down kick blocked. It stays a two-score game. And USF is all kinds of excited, staying in the game in a two-score game. They just came right up the middle. They loaded up their big dudes up front, and they just overpowered the center of the field goal unit for BYU. It was a great effort by the South Florida defense, and it resulted in what could be a momentum-turning play, depending on how this drive uh, turns out and how how well this BYU defense can limit what has been a very productive South Florida offense in the second half. The Cougs were just cruising along. First and goal from the eight, and they get nothing out of the possession. So South Florida backed up to its six. Worst field position of the night for the visitors from Tampa. McLean, shotgun. Mangum with him. Snap to Timmy. Pulls it away. They throw on the slant complete, just like that. Down and in. It's an almost a 20-yard gain on first down and 10. BYU a plus 5 yards advantage in average starting field position tonight. A plus 15 advantage on the scoreboard. But USF's first play is a good one. And McLean's a good one. As he hands off to Mangum. And it's a whole different spirit now from this USF team. A run of two left side on first and ten. Second and eight from the BYU or the USF 25-yard line is coming up. Good stop on that good run stuff by Earl Tuioti Mariner on that last play. They hurried trying to get a quick one from Mangum. And uh, there was nowhere to go as Earl swallowed him up for the short game. BYU has scored in every quarter, but they haven't scored in the fourth. They scored in quarters one, two, and three. And they were about to go with some kind of points in the fourth until the blocked field goal. McLean in the gun with Mangum. The crouch, the snap, the belt high snap results in a give to Mangum. Multiple Cougars stack him up and bring him down. No gain on the play. Maybe a yard to third and seven, will they say? Yes. So to the 26-yard line, and BYU can still hold here. The Bulls did move the chains once. Oh, BYU player down. And the first four games have really tested BYU's depth as player after player has gone down for BYU. And we yet 
We've yet to identify who's down. We'll do so during the break, we hope. 13-34 to play. Is it Caden Hawes? It is. So defensive tackle Caden Hawes is down, and we're taking a break with 13.34 to go, and USF hanging in. It's a two-score game, 35-20. It's third and seven for USF on their own 26-yard line when we come back on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's head back to the Built Bar broadcast booth and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. 11 o'clock here at the Mountain Time Zone. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You're listening to BYU Football on BYU Radio. Following a field goal block from USF, the Bulls are third and seven at their own 26-yard line. By the way, first time that an opponent has blocked a BYU field goal since Boise State did it five years ago in a one-point BYU loss, 28-27. BYU leads here 35-20. to Third and seven. Chance for the Cougar defense to stiffen and force a punt and get some momentum back here. 35-20. Momentum lost on the field goal block. McLean's in gun. Kelly Joyner Jr. diagonally behind him to his right. A three-step drop. A gun complete. First down again. Xavier Weaver again. Needed seven, got eight. And with every snap, Timmy McLean seems to gain more and more confidence out there. And USF, they're right in this ball game. It's a two-score game with 13-13 to play. Third down conversion. USF has snapped 16 more plays than BYU tonight. Possession time heavily in USF's favor. BYU has scored quickly on its drives tonight. But USF's done a nice job keeping the offense off the field for long stretches. McLean gives middle. Veer right. Second level run for Kelly Joyner Jr. First down. 15-yard run. Give him 14 to near midfield. The 48-yard line. BYU football brought to you by Renaissance Ranch for more than 20 years. Renaissance Ranch, Utah's number one addiction treatment center has been effectively treating men and their families, helping them become one. Learn more at renaissanceranch.net. 12.29 to play. USF driving. First and 10 at the Bulls' 48-yard line. Chest eye snap. Timmy McLean pulls it away, sprints out to the right, will tuck and step out at the BYU 49, gain of three. Second down, seven, USF. BYU started off this game lighting up uh, McLean with pressure. Then he started escaping from the pocket, hurting them with his legs. Not with huge, you know, chunk plays, but getting first downs here and there. Now they're sitting back playing zone, and he's he's kind of in a comfort level with these wide receivers who are finding the soft pockets and running a real efficient offense. Second down and seven at the BYU 49-yard line, and I'm thinking four down territory if I'm USF right now, middle of the field. Empty for McLean. Throws right flat. Catch made. Force out. One yard shy of the line to gain to Kelly Joyner Jr. On second and seven, got six. Third down and one. And now I think it's definitely Official four down out. territory. Speaking of injuries, uh, a short time ago, there was a BYU player on the sideline in a boot. Let's go down to Mitchell Jurgens in the Zions Bank end zone. For banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you and find out who is in that boot. Mitch? Yeah, Greg, so Mason Wake, um, right before halftime, he limped off to the locker room, um, and he is now on the sideline in a boot. Um, I I did get a report that it did seem to be a bit precautionary uh, for this injury, so hoping hoping nothing comes back serious as uh, he'll be needed uh, moving forward for the rest of the season. BYU player down in the USF team area, and it's Caleb Hayes. So many players last couple of weeks have been dinged and have had to leave the game for one reason or another. BYU came into tonight, uh, missing, of course, starting quarterback, Jaron Hall. Down a couple of starting defensive linemen in Atunai Samahe and Tyler Batty. They'd already lost Keenan Peely for the season last week. Caleb Hayes slowly walks to the opposite sideline. 11.38 to go. Since going down 21 to nothing, USF has outscored BYU 20 to 14. It's a two-score game with USF facing third and one at the BYU 43-yard line. 
And again, even though the teams change and the scenarios are somewhat different, BYU has these instances in which a big lead is narrowed and a response is required. And every week, BYU's been equal to the task to pull away for the points needed for the win. But nothing come te- t- coming terribly easy on a night when it appeared it would be just that with a 21-0 first quarter lead. Timmy McLean, the rookie southpaw in the shotgun on a third down and one. Give Mangum middle and first down. Needed one, got three and almost four. USF over the 325-yard mark. BYU nearing 425 yards per play. 10 to 5 in BYU's favor. But USF is doing a nice job keeping the offense cooling its heels. USF's run nearly 20 more snaps than BYU tonight. 40-yard line of BYU. Time for the Coug defense to rise again. 11-11 to go. And the lead is 15-35-20. BYU lost a fourth-quarter lead and the game in Tampa two years ago. The shotgun snap to McLean. Puts it in the belly of the back, Jaron Mangum. Mangum second level. First down run again for South Florida. Inside the 30, the 27-yard line. There will be a lot to work on from one week to another before you have, before BYU takes on Utah State in Logan and another BYU player is down. This was timeout for an injury. This time is it Gabe Summers? Gabe Summers down at the 41-yard line. Media timeout. We'll take a break with 10.43 to go. USF driving and BYU in hang-on mode. It is the Cougars 35, South Florida 20. 10.43 to play on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update. Some surprising scores out of the Pac-12. Both games in the third quarter. Arizona has pulled within five at number three, Oregon. It is 24-19 Ducks. And Oregon State right now working the USC Trojans in L.A. It is 35-17 in favor of the Beavers. Let's head back over to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Thanks a lot, Jason. You can stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires for the lowest price on every tire, plus no credit needed financing. Big O Tires, the team you trust. BYU 35, USF 20. BYU still one of a handful of teams this season yet to trail in a game. But USF is within two scores in this game. BYU scored in every quarter but the fourth. And the Cougs might need one more fourth quarter score to feel completely at ease on this night. And it appeared when BYU was first in goal from the eight, they would certainly get some kind of score. But they got nothing. Getting three yards on first, incomplete on second, incomplete on third, and then a blocked field goal on fourth to keep the Cougs at 35 and keep USF within reach. 35-20, 35-20, first and 10 Bulls at the BYU 27-yard line. Jaron Mangum is the running back to the left of Timmy McLean, the southpaw in the gun. Calls for the snap, receives it at his belt, gives to Mangum middle. Mangum on first and 10, gets four. Run between the hashes and between the tackles, and the pile's slow to dissolve. As the game clock is down to 10.20 and counting here in the fourth quarter. BYU at Utah State Friday night. After three straight home games, Cougs back out on the road for their first true away game of 2021. Mangum now to the right hip of McLean in shotgun on second and six at the BYU 23. A straight back drop, a pump. Pocket holds, goes for the end zone, and it is batted down. Broken up at the back of the end zone. Well done. D'Angelo Mandel, or who was that? That was Mandel on the pass breakup. And that's now 10 straight in... After nine straight completions, an incompletion for Timmy McLean. Good coverage by Mandel on that last route. Weaver, who's their speedster, just ran on a deep crossing route. He had a step on Mandel, but the throw was had a little bit too much loft, which allowed Mandel to 
break up the pass without interfering with the receiver. Third down and six. Player late to get off for BYU. Third and six, USF at the BYU 23. McLean shotgun. Single back, two wides to either side. Keeper for McLean. Running to the left. And will be stopped. Just sh- Oh, he got it. I think he got to the marker. Will they say short? He was wrapped up by three Cougars as he approached the boundary. And did he make the line to gain? He had a real good push at the end of it. And they're going to mark him. Is it just short? Half yard short, looks like. Fourth down and a half yard. And USF will keep the offense on the field. So fourth and less than a yard to go for South Florida. As the run from McLean came one yard shy of the line to gain. So BYU with 9.15 to play prepares for a fourth and one on offense from South Florida. McLean's in the gun on fourth and one from the 18-yard line. The snap, handoff middle, and the pile pushed. I think they got it. The crowd's excited about it, but where the spot is, that would be first down. Am I reading it right, Riley? I think you are, Greg. Yeah. I think, yeah. It's the first down line to gain about splits where they spotted the football. So first down, USF. 8.55, clock rolling. First and 10, the BYU 17. And the Bulls need two scores, two touchdowns. Cougars holding to a field goal here. I don't think they would even try a field goal. Shotgun snap, McLean gives Mangum. Mangum runs directly into Peyton Wilgar, who wraps him up and throws him down for a loss of one on the run left. Second and 11, clock rolling to 8.35. USF used two th- uh, two timeouts early in the second half. They're down to one. BYU, all three timeouts remaining. You need more plays from your bell cows, your Peyton Wilgars, your Chaz Ayus, your senior statesmen on this BYU defense need to come up big in big situations like this. BYU's run only 42 plays. USF is nearing 70. McLean Gunn with Mangum to his right. Second and 11 from the BYU 18. Ball far hash. Bulls left to right. Chest high snap. Play fake. Step up. Fire for the end zone. Caught at the 2 to the 1. First and goal. South Florida. And the catch made by Xavier Weaver. Who else? He is a playmaker. And USF is on the verge of making it a one-score game. Tempoing here. Trying to catch BYU off guard. First and goal from the 1. McLean is in shotgun. Snap McLean. Keeper. Leans didn't get there. Half yard outside the plane. Second and goal from inside the one. And McLean's slow to get up. BYU player leaves dinged. Line change for BYU defensively. Game clock at 725. Play clock at 25. Second and goal inside the one for South Florida. BYU 35. USF 20. McLean backs to the gun. Waves the tight end Carter in motion. Sets at left tackle. The give Mangum. Mangum lean. Didn't get there. Tried to squeeze the ball ahead. And no, on his backside, he's kept out. It'll be third and goal from inside the one-yard line. And the game clock under seven minutes. A lot of time ticking away. If South Florida scores, BYU will again need probably one more score to seal the deal. It's a familiar script. But it's third and goal inside the one for South Florida. Ball far hash. The white-clad Bulls into the rock end zone. McLean shotgun. Waves Dollison in motion. He stops at tight end right. The snap at the chest. The handoff to Mangum. The pile pushing to the plane. No signal, no signal. A pushback and he's kept out on third and goal. It'll be fourth. We've got to get one more stop here, Greg. This is clear four down territory. This BYU defense that has made a living on being bend, don't break. Well, this is the time not to break. Fourth down and goal. A half yard from the end zone. It'll be under six minutes when this ball is snapped. Another time-consuming, yard-devouring drive from South Florida. There, there's under 10 on the play clock. They're still in the huddle. i got to imagine they're going to burn a timeout here. Yep. And this is it. Timeout. This will be the 19th play of this drive. Unbelievable. Charge timeout, South Florida. Please reset the game clock. Five minutes, 49 seconds. This drive began. Five, four, nine. 
The drive began nine minutes ago at the seven-yard line of USF. 18 plays, 93 yards to this point. Okay. It's a half yard outside the end zone. We're taking a timeout. 5.49 to play. It'll be fourth and goal inside the one for South Florida. Needing a touchdown, trailing by 15. BYU 35, USF 20. We're taking a break on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. Fillmore Spencer is Utah Valley's largest top-rated local law firm. Can play offense, defense, or provide a little coaching. Fillmore Spencer, solving problems and seizing opportunities for you, your family, and your business. Big-time opportunity here for the BYU defense. It is fourth and goal inside the one for South Florida. BYU 35, USF 20, 5.49 to play. The Rock has been outstanding this season. And the noise of the Rock is... After further review, the ruling on the field stands. The South Florida coach has used his only challenge of the game. That is the third and final timeout for South Florida. So USF evidently took a timeout to challenge. 30-second charge timeout. So the previous timeout. To challenge the spot. No, and then they that they come coming out of that timeout. South Florida comes out, lines up. Kalani did not like the offensive look or the defense that he had sent out to defend that look. Came out running onto the field, called timeout again. This one's only a thirty second to make sure they got their strategy dialed in. Right. So what they were challenging was the spot whether the ball broke the plane or not, yeah. and they said the ruling on the field stands. So the challenge makes the uh, makes USF lose its timeout. They're out of timeouts. BYU takes one. They have two left, and we go back to fourth and goal inside the one and the noise of the rock can it play any kind of role here on fourth down inside the one yard line USF a little more than a length of the football away from the end zone and they're going to go shotgun for Timmy McLean he shields his ears He awaits the snap. He waves a man in motion, takes the snap. They fake fly sweep. They hand off middle and the lean. Did they score the touchdown wave for the signal? No signal, no signal yet. Now it comes. Touchdown. Jaron Mangum on the score. Got the push at the very end. And USF has made it a one-score game or is about to make it a one-score game with either a PAT or a two-point try. They'll take the sure PAT to make it an eight-point game. 35-26 It was, 35-26 with the PAT pending. Pardon me, Greg. I was going to say it was that close that the linesman had to come running in from the sideline to to confirm, to verify that the ball crossed the plane. Mangum was contacted initially at about the one. There was some leg drive and a little bit of a stalemate, and then as he was brought to the ground, he was able to twist his body and get the nose of the football just over the goal line. 94-yard, 19-play drive. PAT is up and good. It's 35-27. Since going up 21-0, BYU's been outscored 27-14 by a team on a 14-game FBS losing streak. Jeff Scott has not beaten an FBS team yet since he's become head coach at USF. But now it's a one-score game. And here we go again. I didn't think this would be the game, but it's another one of the same. The last three weeks, Utah, Arizona... Utah, Arizona State, BYU's seen it go from a multi-score lead to a one-score game and need one more score to seal the deal. And every time, BYU's responded, is there more magic in the Cougs tonight to get that done? I will tell you right now, USF has run 30 more plays than BYU. 72 snaps to 42. BYU's had only seven possessions. Number three for South Florida has changed jerseys. He is now number 44. Number three is number 44 now. With only 5.41 to go, BYU's had seven drives on the night. Touchdown, 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 punt. Touchdown, touchdown, miss field goal, and man, does that miss field goal loom large. The blocked field goal has now made it a one-score game. And South Florida's scoring drives, 13 plays, 12 plays, 14 plays, 6, and then 19 plays, Nine minutes, five seconds off the clock. BYU sent out the hands team, Greg. USF. Quick kicks on side, and it goes out of bounds. And it'll be a short field for BYU. 
and a flag flew on the far side. May have been procedure. Yeah, that's if the not kick offside out of bounds. on. Hey, that's right. That's, that's the flag kick out of bounds. Exactly right. Yep. Yeah. So USF was onside, but did kick out of bounds. They went quick onside, and now BYU will have Free a kick short out of field. Bounds by the kicking team. Five yard penalty will be added when the kick went out of bounds. It's first down, BYU. So the Cougs will get the football in USF territory, and they really only need. 15 yards to to be in field goal range to put the game somewhat out of reach. At 35-27, it's BYU football first down and 10 at the 47 of USF. They go pistol with Algier behind Baylor Romney. They motion. Gunner, they give Tyler, who goes middle for four. He was looking for more, but an ankle tackle was made, making it second down and six. Now, USF cannot stop the clock. They're out of timeouts. 5.30 to go, and the clock is rolling, and BYU should not snap any ball before five seconds are left on the play clock. So here's how you approach this, Greg. Your play calling reflects the aggressiveness that you are trying to go in and score and seal this game, make it a two-touchdown game. Your timing, your pace of your offense reflects that you are trying to limit any if South Florida does get the ball back after you score the remaining time on the clock, especially with them having no timeouts. The Cougs know the drill by now. Second down, six from the 43. Give Algier immediately stopped up, but then keeps it driving. That's a tremendous run for a first down. He runs right for nine on second down and six. And that was Tyler running through contact again and making sure he would not be brought down, setting up a third down. So it's first down at the 34, first and 10. BYU leading it with 441 to play. A full play clock. The clock in BYU's favor. The scoreboard shows 35-27. BYU leading South Florida. There's two reasons why Tyler Algier is so good at running through contact. One, he's genetically gifted. He's just big. He's thick through the hips. He's got powerful thighs and legs. But number two is he does such a good job squaring his shoulders downhill. You never catch him with lateral shoulders, which means that he is a load for any potential tackler. Give Tyler again, this time between tackles for four. Give him three that time to the 31-yard line. Tyler Algier, 13 carries, 83 yards, two touchdowns, averaging better than six yards per carry tonight. 31-yard line of USF. A field goal would make it an 11-point game, and USF would have no timeouts remaining and needing two scores. So any kind of points here in the game is over, essentially, for BYU. Ideally, kind of with the way the second half has gone, psychologically, I mean, obviously you want to come away with the W, but psychologically you'd like to grind this down and maybe your running back springs a tackle, you end up in the end zone. Play clock at 4, game clock at 3, 33. Shotgun snap to Romney, throws far side. Taking a knee after making the catch is brother Gunner. And is he okay there? He's all right. He could have driven for some more yards, but he kind of went down with it, and it'll be third down and one. So that's part of, I, I mentioned that you still want to score. You've got nine yards. There was, he was a sitting duck. The corner was right in front of him. He'd already kind of, he was about to engage with two other tacklers that could potentially pop a ball out for a fumble. That was ball security drill 101. Now, BYU may not even need a score. If this clock gets under two and they've got a first down, they won't need to even do anything beyond Neal. Five-second play clock, 250 game clock, third down and one. The handoff to Algier, and he gets the one plus one. So the 23-yard line, first down. The clock will stop to move the chains. And it's all but elementary now. Certainly points would seal the deal. But the Cougs may not even need that at this rate. So 27-second play clock, 2-27 now on the game clock. BYU up 35-27, and a new set of downs. First down at the USF 23-yard line. Tyler Algier now 14 for 85 and two scores. Ball between the hash marks. And the Cougs looking to salt this one away. Romney's in the gun with Algier to his right hip. Ooh, it's a fumble in the backfield. Both Baylor Romney and Tyler Algier fall to the ground. And nothing USF can do. They can't stop the clock. But what they have done is force a loss of five on the play, creating second down and 15. Now 155 to play. The snap came prematurely. Baylor was not expecting it. Good thing it was an accurate snap. It went right off his belly. And then he and Tyler were fortunate enough to be able to uh, both 
together, smother the football before the Southern Florida, before the South Florida defenders arrive. 15 second play clock, 135 game clock. Now there's some work to be done. Second down, 15 back at the USF 28. Baylor Gunn with Algier and Pistol. They motion Keanu Hill. They give Tyler Middle, spins out a one tackle, strings it out to the far side, brought down after a gain of only one. It'll be third down, 14, 120 to go. The clock will get to around 40 seconds. And so field goal can seal the deal, and they could indeed have that being the opportunity here seconds from now. So, now it, oh, sorry, Greg. No, I, I was saying, I mean, you, if you do kick so, a field goal, you do lock it. But but here here's burn mode. So they're going to snap it with about 42, 43 seconds. So you run a wide play, maybe a, a sne- that's going to take somewhere around six to seven seconds, which means that the new play clock, the new 40, will start with the game clock under 40 yeah, seconds. So that's game, game over. over. Yep. So you just need to make sure this play doesn't happen too, too short. Yeah. So Lopini needs to stretch it out. And get now tackled it gets under, under 40. 40. Now the game is over. There you go. Yeah, they won't need to kick. So we got to 35 seconds on that play, and so that will do it. So BYU won't need to do anything else but shake hands. Final score, 35-27. The clock does run out on South Florida tonight, but they were game after falling down 21-0, made it a game, and BYU wins it by a score of 35-27. Post-game recap is coming up next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's head back to the Built Bar broadcast booth and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, BYU fans, the Smiths has all your fresh game day grilling and tailgating faves. And when you shop today, you can get free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Just order from the app or at Kroger.com and make your game day great. Smiths, fresh for everyone. BYU on 50 plays to USF's 72. Wins it by a score of 35 to 27. BYU gains 443 yards to USF's 367. BYU 138 rush, 305 pass. A 305, a new career high for Baylor Romney. USF 181 rush and 186 pass. A balanced evening for the visiting Bulls. BYU led 21-0 after one quarter. Led 28-6 at halftime. The second half belonged to USF by a score of 21-7. BYU's 7 came on its one touchdown scoring drive of the second half. In fact, BYU had three second half possessions. <laughs> three second half possessions. A touchdown, a field goal blocked, and then the possession to end the game where BYU ran out the clock. That was it in the second half. But here is how the one touchdown scoring drive ended in the third quarter. As they go play fake and they go deep down the middle, Baylor to Gunner again makes the catch for the touchdown! Hauls it in inside the five. For six, BYU scores again, brother to brother, Baylor to Gunner, and the Cougs go up 34 to 13 with the PAT pending. PAT good, and 35 27 is your final score. USF, three touchdowns in the second half after not scoring a touchdown before halftime. Baylor Romney, 20 for 25, 305, three touchdowns, no picks, passer rating 222.1. Not bad for the number two. Tyler Algier, 15 carries, 81 yards and two scores. Lopini Katoa, four carries, 40 yards. Baylor Romney himself had four carries, 414. Samson Nakua, two rushes for three. Through the air, Gunnar Romney, five catches for a buck 19 and a touchdown. Mason Wake, five catches, 24 and a score. Neil Pau, four for 42 and a score. Puka Nakua, his first century mark day for BYU, four for 102. One for 14 for Isaac Rex and Tyler Algier. One catch for four yards. Timmy McLean went 17 for 24 for a buck 86. No touchdowns, no picks. Passer rating of 135.9. Jaron Mangum led the Bulls in rushing. Two touchdowns, 26 carries, 86 yards on the ground. Xavier Weaver, five grabs for 76 to lead USF through the air. BYU, as mentioned, uh, outgained USF. First downs, USF had more of them, 23-21. to 21. Third downs, BYU ran just seven, two for seven. USF, six for 15. Total plays as noted. USF ran 22 more than BYU. The 50 plays by BYU, the fewest since snapping 49 against Washington in 2018. But BYU lost that one big, 35-7. to seven. They win this one, 35-27. 72 plays to 50 in USF's favor, but yards per play heavily in BYU's advantage. 8.9 yards per snap to 5.1 for South Florida. 
BYU had uh, was t- uh, turnover free tonight, right? Correct. Yep, they did have a field goal blocked, but they were turnover free. They were plus one in the margin as USF had one fumble recovered. Possession time to USF plus 11 minutes on the night. Well, BYU finds a way to get it done again. That's about kind of been the MO this year. 4-0 is 4-0, though, Riley, and 4-0 in back-to-back years for the first time in BYU football history. Tremendous. It's a night to be remembered, and quite honestly, given the tests of the next two weeks, which is a Utah State team that was th- is 3-1, and one, had their own uh, 3-0 and oh start of themselves, suffered a, a setback, is going to have their backs against their wall and come out with a vengeance tomorrow. Uh, this is great, or sorry, it's come out with Avengers next week. This to me was w- one of the better possible outcomes in that it's a game film. It's going to be a tape that this BYU team can learn a lot from. They will not go into Logan next Friday complacent. They will have a great week of practice uh, for a battle on conference weekend next week. But overall, i got to admit, Greg, when you got a quarterback with the numbers, uh, with the stat line that you just quoted from Baylor, two wide receivers, uh, and you put up 35 points, the game shouldn't feel the way that it felt this offense has uh, or sorry this defense has a lot of uh, you know adjusting and and a lot of uh, cleaning up to do I I will state we mentioned it in the pregame but Keenan Peely the captain of this defense the quarterback of this defense obviously being out for the season I think that was a contributing factor in this defensive performance but overall a win is a win is a win and uh, you can deal with all that other stuff on Monday. All right, that is our postgame recap. Coming up next, Jason Shepard is standing by with Cougar Postgame Live. Then we'll have the Big O Tires Cougar Locker Room Show. Final score, BYU 35, USF 27 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.